What's up, everybody? So this episode is super interesting because it was about the Vice Black Markets, where uh, I did a episode with Vice, and there was this um, punk, punk ass yakuza named Koike that we had on the scene, and he was talking a lot of shit. So we kind of talk about that. So don't miss it, man. Check it out. This will be a cool episode. Right on. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Yamaso Damashi podcast. My name is James, of course, joined by Ensign himself. Ensign, how are you, man? How are you doing? Super good, man. Busy uh, with train. Just got back about four days ago from Hawaii. Long trip in Hawaii. And uh, just straight into the training, man. No breaks. Uh, just uh, still got to compete and, you know, fight jet lag as I'm training Soshi every day, pretty much. That's rough. Yeah, I was going to ask you how you deal with a jet lag with all the traveling back and forth. Any tips? I just ignore it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm asking because a uh, bit, bit of breaking news on the podcast. I will be joining Ensign for New Year's Eve. I will be there. So we're hoping to get some cool content while I'm out there. So pretty pretty express visit as it's less than a week, but we'll... Uh, We'll find some time to uh, put some stuff together. So uh, hopefully all your fans can enjoy that. But yeah, more news to come on that shortly. But today's episode, we thought, um, given that Ensign put up a clip from the episode he did for Vice Black Market, we thought we'd run through that episode a little bit and then maybe talk some of the themes uh, from the episode and maybe what things are like today. Um on that note so going back then so this is about 2015 2016 that the episode was recorded um how did vice get in touch with you well vice uh wanted to do something on uh they, they, their overall coverage wanted to be the black market so um the prostitution uh drug smuggling and the gangs so yeah so i was contacted because i'm i'm close with a lot of the groups and without me being a part of it, those groups probably wouldn't have cooperated with Vice as much as they did. So I was asked uh, to be a part of it so we could get their cooperation. Awesome. Yeah, because the the whole black market series goes all around the world. Um, what was interesting about this episode, I found, was the, the theme of it, right? So it kind of starts off talking about, obviously, underground street fights and the gambling on that. But sort of the theme suddenly becomes the idea that there's the traditional uh, Yakuza, um, but then there's also like the, is it Gur Gurintai? Or I can't really pronounce it. Well. Yeah, which was, it's kind of like, um, people don't know, sort of the street gangs, like street gangs and, and mafia, right? I guess kind of the less official. And that was kind of like the theme of the episode, which is really cool and interesting to see sort of how they, how they compare. So as we break down the episode, I've got a couple of questions on what, what that's like. But, um, you know, the episode kind of starts with you guys in a restaurant um, talking about, you know, different things. And one of the things is you ask uh, one of the guys there, what's his occupation? And he comes out with uh, like cleaning business or something like that. And I was curious, is that common for Yakuza or like Gurintai, like to have like some sort of alias, I guess, for uh, what their job is? Well, yeah, I think uh, a lot of them have a normal job, but a lot of them don't. Like, I, he was kind of joking around because I think he, what he meant by cleaning was he cleans out bad people. Oh, okay, wow. So like, the, like the strong arm. That guy's like the strong arm. He he he's like a pro kickboxer kind of thing. Real real good fighter. So, yeah. Masa, his name is Masa. That guy. Yeah. 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 Uh, but no, that that was interesting. I was wondered, you know, how open people are, I guess, around what they do, if that makes sense. Is that something like do people? I mean, I guess is it disclosed by the fact the appearance, right, with the tattoos? Is that how people generally know, like, oh, this guy's connected? Yeah, I mean, pretty much, it's it's not something that they hide. They're not too, um, they're not something that's it's it's frowned upon, and they don't they don't try to 
you know, like if a lady was a prostitute, maybe she'd be more uh, embarrassed to say it. it uh, being a yakuza or or a gangster is not something that is frowned upon, especially in that 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 side of the world. Because mm-hmm. I mean, that was always something I noticed growing up that. There's so many movies about Yakuza. There's so many video games about Yakuza and stuff like that that it's kind of like not necessarily celebrated, but it, I guess it's kind of like the Italian mafia, right? We love films like The Godfather and that side of things. It's quite, it's in pop culture, but it's interesting to see how it crosses over between sort of everyday Japanese people and actually, you know, um, people that seem you, like... You'll yeah, meet someone and hang out with someone you come here. Sounds interesting. Sounds good. <laughs> um so um the 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 um the, the episode kind of focuses uh on you know two fighters one of them's uh, a guy called Kita. I was wondering um you know is that someone that you keep in contact with still? Yeah, he's uh so Kita is with a group that uh um I'm with the the Kita Kyushu guys like uh, I think on Instagram I posted a video of uh, me going to Kita Kyushu before uh, Shoshi's last fight mm-hmm. and they they were at a restaurant and they had like a a barbecue restaurant that they rented out the whole top floor and it was just the boys and they came to pretty much pay their respects to me it's it's like um i know that their boss their boss is like my uh, uh we, we call it like kohai so he's like a a guy that's kind of under me and he, their, their boss calls me boss and these guys are um I, I've knew, knew these guys for over a decade, so I've seen that group grow from 12 guys to to like 50, 60 guys. Wow. So you know the 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 by the guy Roll Roll is the boss. He mm-hmm. like he's like super feared and super respected by them, and he like like loves me, so like like respects me. To a point where he calls me boss. So you, you gotta figure for those guys, it's like their boss is calling this other guy boss. I mean, their boss is already like God. So I'm like uh, some uh, a higher symbol. Like yeah. So it's kind of weird because when I go there, you can see them looking at me like like I'm not like that human, like almost like I'm some superhero that's sitting there and they're like in awe. You know, it's kind of it's, it's it's a little weird. And I even catch a roll. I'm even yes, Sarah. You catch we catch roll like staring at me. <laughs> but they they admire me and they uh, they respect me. I think it's a in this world. I think it's a real good mixture of fear and respect. Mm-hmm. Without one or the other, you're not going to get too far in this world. If you only got respect and they have no fear of you, it's probably not going to work out well. If they have only fear but they don't respect you, this is probably not going to work out well. But I got lucky where I somehow in this world, in the in the black side of the world, the gangster side, I've got both pretty good. So it, it, it's almost like you, yeah, you'll meet a lot of them, but you 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 you'll, you'll bet you'll be knowing that they knowing that you're with me, they're gonna be on their most respectful behavior. You you'll probably be like, oh, those guys are so nice. Uh, yeah. I can't even imagine they're you know being do, doing bad stuff like Yakuza do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, I'm excited to see that firsthand. Um, so just to clarify them, because that was one of the things that did sort of confuse me in the episode. So are they so they are Yakuza, but the the because they, they were sort of referring to them as something different in the episode, right? It was kind of because you had they you cut to Koike, who we'll get onto in a minute, was kind of like a traditional Yakuza. So what's the main differences between those the two sides of groups, I guess? Okay, so the Yakuza is already, the, um, to become a Yakuza, you have to be officially affiliated with one of the groups. Right. And there's tons of groups. There's like the Yamaguchi Gumi, there's the Inagawa Kai, there's the Sumiyoshi, Kyokuto, Osekai. I mean, Yamaken, there's a whole bunch of uh, groups. So if you're registered to a group where you've taken your oath with the group, then you're Yakuza. But you follow their rules. And, and what the, the gangster guys that are not Yakuza, the reason why nowadays they don't join the Yakuza is because the Yakuza run shit really different. Yeah. So, for example, if um, the boss of the Yakuza group has a problem with somebody, they'll send all the soldiers out to take care of it. Mm-hmm. 
if the soldier has a problem, they'll send out other soldiers to help them. Okay, but with the gangster boys, like even for me, the way I run my group, if one of my guys has a problem, I go out and take care of it. Yeah, so they, it's a real different thing where um, the top guys of the group in the Yakuza group, don't they, they sit back and make the younger guys do everything mm -hmm. while the... Um, the the gangster guys, the top guys will take care of the problem for the younger guys. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, really different. Or it's really yeah. different on the um, the way they do things as far as uh, for their elders and their higher ups. Yeah, that is really interesting, right? It's kind of um, it's weird actually because the way you talk about it is almost like a business in that sense, right? You got like if you think of a typical CEO, he doesn't typically do that he asks for people to deal with things so it's kind of weird how there's parallels there right so much and i guess that makes sense given the nature of things of how it it's almost it's almost like we're talking about like a corporate business and a small business yeah 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 that's what i was thinking have a problem like, at one of the hilton hotels you'll never talk to the top guys you'll talk to all the all the the ones that run and do errands and shit mm -hmm. but if you go to a small business and you have a problem with destiny forever it's me or Sarah going to talk to you about it and help you through it, you know? So yeah. I think it's almost like that where the Yakuza groups are so huge that they have this uh, system that they run that is really um, not so personable with the group. But the gangster guys are a lot more personable. You know, I, when I went, that when I whenever I go there, man, I get red carpet. These guys uh, put me up in a hotel. La last time I went up there, they, they drove me. They took me on a Shinkansen, a bullet train, like a hour yeah. bullet train. Then in another car ride, they did everything. They bought my tickets. They rented the car. Took me all the way to Miyamoto Musashi's grave. Took me around. Bought me dinner. Bought me. I mean, put me in a hotel. Sent. Get, had make sure I had a massage every night. I mean, these guys like take care of me like I'm royalty, and 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 it's yeah. been like that. It's, it's not like something that just happens every so often. They've done that. They've done that ever since I've come around. And it's amazing. I mean, the way they take care of me. They, they, that's the thing with the, about the, the gangster guys, too. They really take care of each other. And they will yeah. die for each other. Cool. Yeah, that was kind of expressed in the episode, right? That there's a real sort of, sort of love between them. Like, it's a friendship. And it's kind of where they sort of said that the, maybe in the more sort of structured Yakuza groups, it's it's more of a your boss sort of thing like a business relationship so it's definitely interesting to see how they, they the two compare um going back to you know one of the big um things was there's a, a scene in the episode where um there's showing weapons and that side of things and then the police turn up what there's only showed a little clip of it but what actually happened there <laughs> okay we call it a buki buki in the japanese is weapon right so I named the guy Buki Man because he has all these weapons in his car. I mean, we're eating uh, yakiniku and he would come in with different weapons, like huge stun guns and machetes and showing us this and that. And we saying, oh, and I, and of course you ask him, like, have you used that? He goes, no, 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 no. I didn't use this. I said, oh, so you don't use it? And he goes, no, if I use it, I throw it out. <laughs> yeah, so... so <laughs> It wasn't like he doesn't use them. He uses them. But if he uses them, he throws it out. The scene, you know, I mean, like like Vice is like any other movie. They want to dramatize things. Mm -hmm. So the scene where the police was coming, the police just drove by. Right. And this guy freaked out and left. Wow. Okay. The scene of the police talking to us was not that time. Right. Okay. That's it was a different time when we we're walking the streets, and because we look real gangsters, the cops came and has harassed us. Right. Okay. 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 Yeah. So that was what, that was the scene, but it made it look like the cops came for him. Um, as we're speaking about this, the guy Buki Man is in jail, sitting in jail right now. Oh no way! Do you know what? Last time I went up, I asked for him, and they said no, he's in jail for a while. So oh, I didn't ask wow. why. Oh, but okay. I mean, you can assume probably because his little weapons. Something violent, we'll guess. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Um, so the you mentioned that the police just sort of stopped you guys for any particular reason or just the way 
the apparent? Um, in, in, in Japan, I mean, hopefully we don't experience it, but in Japan, they can just walk up to you and ask to see your, your, what's in your wallet, what cards you have, what's, what's in your pocket, so where do you live, show me your ID, without having been committed a crime or anything. You know, I see a lot of these shows on cops. In the U.S., they have the show Cops or 24 yeah. with the police. And, you know, these ki- these people are giving them the, you know, constitutional rights. You're violating my rights. I didn't do anything wrong. What crime have I committed? I don't need to show an ID. I have, like, that shit don't fly here. Really? Wow. You show them your ID. They want to see your ID. If you don't show them your ID, you're going to, you, you may as well uh, give up an hour of your day because they're going to be prying on you. And and it's, it's, it's real, it's really... Uh, the police really have no laws against them here. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That is like a completely different to the West, right? Where people will sort of, uh, I'll send you a clip that I had. I have a clip in here that I've actually got harassed by them. Oh, really? And wow. I took the video of it. I'll send it to you. It's a personal video. So you yeah. can use that video. So I'll, I'll send, send it away. to you to put it, clip it in this. Yeah. We'll put it in right now. Can show just for nothing. Just for nothing. I didn't do anything in there doing this show. So you go to the show? Yeah, that's right. You know it is. And say you know it is. Then go. Talk to you. You know. You know. She already did it. Same by the other side. You good? Talk to her. Talk to her. Oh my. So I need to obviously talk about the character Quake because it was a big part of the episode, one of the more sort of shocking elements of the episode, I'd say, just because of some of the stuff that he was saying. Um, so the first way they introduced Quake is the instant that actually you posted on your Instagram page uh, as a reminder from, from that episode. So uh, let's get into that first. You said that a couple of nights before um, something went down where... Um, Quickie wasn't happy with the level of customer service. Is that right? Yeah, that was actually that. That wasn't a couple of nights ago. That was about a couple of months ago. Oh, okay. I just had that footage that they wanted to use that footage when I told them about that footage. But yeah, so yeah. we're in a VIP room in a hostess club. Yep. And you know he ordered girls to come sit by us, so the girls are sitting by us, and um, some of the girls that uh. You know, the girls have other customers that um, they call it shime, where they reserve, we request them. So these girls are requested by other customers. So, of course, you're not the only customer. So they got to pass them around. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you're ordering drinks and stuff, you know, when the club's crowded, it'll take a little longer. Mm-hmm. And Kuike just thought, didn't think that, you know, it's not that he didn't feel he was getting good service. He felt he wasn't getting enough special service, being who he was. Okay. So, yeah. So, that incident happened I, like that. Um, part, uh, you know, to, you know, before before we even go on, Quick is a fucking punk. Ooh. He's a punk. Yeah, he's a punk. Um, he owes me money. Uh, he's a type of guy that was perfect for the scene. That's yeah. why I asked him to do it because he would say all the stupid shit that he said. Yeah. And I, 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 I don't associate with him at all. Mm-hmm. I, I, and even when I, we called him for that vice interview, I haven't seen him for two years before that because, Oh no. So, so, so that, yeah. So, you know, that scene that we have, that was probably yeah. not two months ago. It was about two years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. And since that scene, I cut, I cut going out. I stopped going out with him because, you, as you notice, I had to pull the bottle out of his hand. Yeah. And it got to a point where I'm sitting with him while he's doing that. It looks bad on me because mm-hmm. he's being a punk. He's picking on weaker people, and that's not my style. Mm-hmm. And it looks bad for me to be sitting there, almost like I agree with what he's doing. That's why I had to stand up and quote, stop him from doing what he was doing. Mm-hmm. And he... If he turned any aggression towards me, I would have just smashed him right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So 
that that I don't agree with. You know the way he is. Uh, I don't hang out with him at all. Uh, he's been mess. He messages me about once a year, and I ignore his messages. Right. Uh, he owes me money, and it will come down to a point where I'll corner him about the money, and even um, you know, almost maybe threaten him or or give him an ultimatum on it. And I think ninety percent chance he'll probably lie to weasel out. But there is a ten percent chance he might he might um, stand up against me, and that's what I kind of want to avoid. Mm. Because if he does stand up against me, I'll smash him physically. I'll smash him physically, and his backing will not his backing will not overcome my backing. My backing will smash his backing. But you know, yeah. it's not 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 somewhere that I want to go right now because I'm out mm. of that whole scene. So maybe mm. we'll visit quickly when you come and I'll call <laughs> them out on the money he owes me when you're there and you can video it. Cool. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, we may as well get it on video and get a good yeah. YouTube, you know, a big YouTube uh, episode. This what I guess our fans want to see that. So uh, yeah, write in the comments if you want to see that sort of thing. And we'll, uh, you know, I could yeah. actually set that up where we go have a dinner with them and then we can interview him about that episode. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. Can, I can even make him uncomfortable and confront him and say, Hey, Quique, you owe me money. When are you going to pay me that money? Yeah. Why not? And why he's not? Gonna lie and say, oh, I'll pay you this. I'll pay you that. And he'll lie. And, and, and I can either decide to corner him more and make him uncomfortable, or I can back off and just, you know, look, look he's lying. So yeah. we, we can actually do that. That might be exciting to do. It could be really exciting. So just in case people haven't seen the episode, to give give you uh, an, an idea of what Koike was saying on this episode was that he killed three dogs, he killed seven people, he gouged someone's eyes out and with a fork and then ate it and made him spat it out or something. I, I don't know if that's true. I don't know whether you know if it's true, but uh, there's some pretty outlandish things to say on a US documentary. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I'm I'm not sure how much is true either. I, I'm not sure if he even killed anyone before. He might have um, the eye thing. I'm not sure about that. The dog thing. I I know he mistreats dogs. That I fucking hate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he was doing it to one of his dogs. He had a pit bull and he was hitting it and shit. Where I had to, I stepped in and told him, bro, don't do that in front of me, man. Yeah, yeah. That's good you did that. Yeah. So I, I just kind of ignored that. You know, when he said that in the Vice, it, I kind of just ignored it because I didn't want to go there. Yeah. Because how much, how difficult was that, right? Like you're, you're, you're doing something for Vice. This isn't like a standard, you going to meet him. This is, you've got cameras there. Like they, Vice is obviously wanting certain things. Like what he said was gold, right? That, that's what TV people want. But how hard was it to sort of grit your teeth at some of the stuff, I guess? Um, I, I know who he is and I, and I know what vice wanted. And the reason why I, I called him over is because, uh, I knew he would, he would eat that, eat that, you know, that spotlight up. He would eat that mm -hmm. spotlight up. And I know he would say stupid shit like vice wanted. Yeah. 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 So, you know, you know, that whole thing, man, you know, we, we paid him shit. We didn't pay him anything. He just got to drink for free. Really? Wow. So Vice picked up that tab at the hostess club, mm -hmm. but he didn't need to get, he didn't need to pay. He got free. He, it looked like he was a big celebrity with the girls because he's getting filmed, you know? So he's a fucking ham. He's a fucking punk. And I, I, I knew how he was and I knew he'd, he'd play, play, play good for the part, but. He's uh he might be uh, scary to some, but I know who he is and I know his backing and I know he's a he's a punk, mm -hmm. and I I don't even care if he sees this, I'll call him a punk to his face. He's a punk. He owes me money. He's a fucking punk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that episode when you're here, and I'll call him a punk to his face and see what he does. That last year he got must watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> if Vice want to get back in touch about, about part two, then <laughs> give us a shout. A um, couple other things before we wrap this one up. Um, and the whole, you know, part of the main theme of the episode as well was the underground fight scene. 
how much of that is still happening today? Yeah, it happens a lot. I mean, you know, it's more about rank, not, not much about the betting. They, the vice wanted the betting part in, but the betting wasn't really – sometimes they don't even bet on it. Right, okay. It was more, it was more um, for, for seniority. It was more for rank. And, and you know what's real funny is because that whole episode, that Vice episode, was supposed to be on prostitution. Uh, they had a big interview with the Kudokai, which is one of the biggest Yakuza groups and probably one of the most craziest Yakuza groups in Japan. Okay. So the prostitute, um, there's a Soapland lady. I did the interview with her. We sat down in a bar and talked about it and asked her how she got into the business. Um I don't know what happened with that. They actually went yeah. to a soap land to film the the process and everything. I didn't go to that one. I stayed in a hotel, but they went with that girl and she kind of showed them how to do the how she does it and everything. Not not getting naked, but just showing the process. Yeah. For some reason that whole that whole section was cut out. Uh the other thing they did was they went and interviewed the Kudokai. Um my boys wouldn't allow me to go there because they didn't want any chance of them disrespecting me where I might get offended and they might have a problem with the Kudokai and them. Mm -hmm. So they just wanted me to keep me away from that whole thing. So Vice had to go on their own to get that interview. They went there and got like a two hour interview. They called me, let me know they got a two hour interview. They're super stoked. They're happy, everything. And then they, like at night, later on at night, they came in medicine. All of a sudden, everything was different. They were like pissed off. They were, I even got a video of the, the guy, Sebastian, the, the head guy, all drunk, complaining. This is fucked up. I want to quit. And he's like rambling about how fucked up it is because when they were, after their interview with the Yakuza, the Kudokai, on the way back, they called him back and said that pull over on the highway. They sent these uh, soldiers to meet them. And they had to erase everything right in front of them. They made them erase every single footage. Wow. I don't know what happened. They, they Somehow they just changed their mind and decided they didn't want that film. Right. And so the higher up guys sent the soldiers down to meet them. And, can, and they had to erase everything that they took. Wow. Can you imagine? <laughs> that's, I mean, from an editor's point of view, that's heartbreaking. But that's just... So it must have been... I wonder what they said. I mean, you mentioned the Kudokai are like notorious, right? Is there any particular reason why that they are so crazy? I don't know. Just so uh, the the Yakuza groups in Japan. It's funny because the uh, the further south you go, the crazier the groups are. Right. And these guys are like known to just uh, pull up in front of a restaurant and shoot somebody. Whoa. Yeah, they're like real, real notorious, real notorious to a point where the the police went and and took down the whole group. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of their offices are shut down now, and it's it's like right now in in Kitakyushu, the Kudokai is almost non-existent. Wow. Yeah, so they, <laughs> they is, I'll, I'll find that footage and send it to you because you guys, it's, it'll be funny to see that where. Yeah. They, they got so bummed about losing the footage. They they don't even, I don't think they even remember me having this footage. So it's going to be funny if they ever see this. And what the fuck? They got, I got them videoed crying yeah. and crying. That's going to be hilarious. So yeah, so, that, so, so this whole episode was supposed to be more about, you know, the black market, the, the Yakuza yeah. side, the prostitution and the gangs. But I guess because of the Yakuza thing fell apart, Somehow the prostitution one didn't fit in well, and and the the gang, the boys that uh, filmed for us with the fights and everything, they uh, that actually actually turned out better than Vice thought it would be. So I guess that's why they decided to um, make that the the main point of the whole story. Yeah, that is, wow, that's super interesting, right? Because the whole thing is literally about the sort of street fighting aspect of it. So it's crazy that there was so much that was cut, like uh, some of it probably exists somewhere some of it by the sounds of it is deleted so uh yeah. really cool to get the behind the scenes on, on that side of things is it um is it something that you think that 
they might approach you again for in the future? Or do you think they were sort of scared witless and will never come back to Japan after that? I don't know. I was actually thinking that I sh we should have staged a kidnapping. Wow. We should have okay. had a couple of guys kidnapped. We could have done that easy. I could have had the boys do that easily and scared the shit out of them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that would have been a great episode, you know? Um, yeah. As far as them coming back, I don't know. I haven't heard from them at all. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I hear that that episode was really popular, so I don't know why they're not interested in doing anything else. But if they do, I'll, I'll make it way more exciting for them. Yeah. I mean, all the feedback on your Instagram was like, where can I watch this? Where can I watch this? Uh, yeah, people, yeah. Thought, people thought it was new, right? Um, yeah. You know, everyone, yeah. everyone was like, when, when does this air? And it's like, it aired five, uh, six, it's seven years like, ago. Six, seven years ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you uh, if you sail the seas and uh, Google it, I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Hint, hint, there's a, it's out there online somewhere. So there's uh, certain people, I don't know, I might have found it, stumbled across it somehow. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, any other memories from that time of filming filming that series? Yeah, um, it was uh, it was funny because uh, I was contracted by Vice for like payment per day and they had to actually fly me back down for another day because they wanted to take a little bit more footage um it was interesting because uh you know they're filming stuff these guys are so good that i don't realize what it's going to look look like and believe me when they filmed it i had no idea it was going to come out as good as it did yeah those guys are really good. They, they, they know how to create the atmosphere. They know how to put things mm -hmm. together in the proper way. And they, for me, it was a big surprise from what I thought we were filming to when I seen the outcome of what was actually created by them, which is amazing. Yeah, the production looks really nice on it, right? They like, I don't know what you mean. They yes. capture like the bar scenes. They capture even the, the fight at the end. They, they capture that so well, right? It's really, really cool to see. Um, yeah, yeah. And you, you, one thing struck me as well. You said about um, in the underground fights, like sometimes they're a lot better than the professional fights because there's almost more on the line in some sense, which was, uh, I could see that, right? I could see that because they, these guys are really giving <coughs> everything they have. But sometimes, you know, it can be uh, more exciting than, you know, something else. So, uh, yeah, well, I think it's a big difference when you're fighting for money or you're fighting for a good record or a belt, then you're fighting for your honor and your pride. Mm. I mean, there, I think um, there's only a certain amount you do for money and for a, for a belt around your waist, but when you're fighting for your honor, for most of the gangster guys, that almost means fight to the death. They believe that honor is more important than life itself. Mm -hmm. So rather than... Uh, destroying their honor they'd rather lose their life yeah <clears throat> awesome well i mean that just about does it i think for on that episode if you have watched the episode and you still had some questions on it by all means put them in the comments um let us know if you want to hear more underground stories these are always pretty popular um, I'm sure Ensign's got a backlog of different <laughs> different tales of different uh clans and all sorts with um you know stories that you can relay maybe some of you can but let us know anyway and um any parting words before we uh, finish this episode nope uh just uh it was it was fun kind of nice to see that episode pop up on my memories mm -hmm. i totally forgot about it and i just kind of shared it on my memories and i uh somebody posted i think the memories i don't know it was, but yeah it was a good experience working with vice uh it's funny because um, I actually get noticed a lot from that. At like Los Angeles airport, I had a guy come up to me and said, oh, you're the vice guy. Like this guy didn't know me as a fighter at all. But he was right. like, oh, you're the vice guy. You're the vice guy. It was like, oh, I'm the vice guy now. It's like pretty cool. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of neat to be recognized. Uh, and that's not only the only time. There's a bunch of times where I got approached about the vice thing. The vice so, thing. So you know, pretty cool. Um, I wish they would do another one. I'm I'm more than happy to work with them again. Yeah. But uh we'll see. 
Yeah, yeah. But there's plenty of content. Cool. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching. We will be back again soon. All right. That was the insights on Vice. Um, you have any questions, any comments, anything else you want me to talk about? Write in the comments and make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Right on.